Hey guys, welcome to day three of the thyroid secret. This is Dr. Isabella Wentz. I'm going to be doing some live Q&A for you guys as well as talking about some of the biggest takeaways from episode three. So if you're watching me live, I'd love for you to come and say hello. If you could chat a little post to me and let me know where you're from, um, if you've been watching the thyroid secret and if you've been enjoying the series. So it looks like I've got a couple of eyes watching me. This is Dr. Isabella Wentz. And I am the creator of The Thyroid Secret. I am a New York Times best-selling author of two books. You could see those behind me, The Hashimoto's The Root Cause, and then Hashimoto's Protocol is my new book that's actually coming out in um, March 28th. I actually just got the book in the mail. This is really, really exciting. So this is the book that's going to be coming out on March 28th. Um, it is all about Hashimoto's and how to recover your health when you have Hashimoto's. We've got um, two parts to this book. The first part is all about um, the fundamentals. So if you have Hashimoto's, the fundamental protocols that you need to take on to recover your health and start feeling better. Um, the protocols I've tested with over 1,000 clients, and I could tell you that 65% of them feel better within two weeks of implementing my protocols. And so this is why I decided to come out with the second book because my first book was all about getting to the root cause, which I still am all about getting to the root cause, but it's like, how do we accelerate healing? How do we start feeling better? And so this um, Hashimoto's protocol has that in there. The second part has assessments for you that help you figure out what your root causes might be. So I was able to dial in some assessments and lessen the amount of testing that you need from my first book by um, just working with over a thousand people and kind of dialing in those symptoms. So um, this is something, the second part of the book has these assessments that will lead you to advanced protocols, and the advanced protocols will help you determine what your specific root causes are and how to test for them and then exactly what to do about them. So looks like we've got a couple of people dialing in. So we have Leslie from Texas. Hello, Leslie. Leslie is saying brilliant series so far. I'm so glad to hear that. Kim is saying this is very helpful. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. And Katerina says, hello, Dr. Isabella. Hello, Katerina. If you're watching, um, if you could let me know if you can hear me, where you're dialing from, and if you've been watching The Thyroid Secret and what kind of thoughts you had about it so far. So I'd love to see some um, feedback from you on that. Also, um, if you are watching this, I would love for you to share this on your timeline and to let people know about the thyroid secret. So um, this is a documentary series that I've been recording over the course of the last year to let people know that there are solutions and things that they can do to recover their health when they have a thyroid condition. Uh, the first two episodes that aired, um, the first one aired on March 1st was focused on really helping you guys understand what it feels like to have thyroid disease because I know a lot of people will ask themselves questions like, oh, well, I'm depressed, is that really related? Or um, I'm in pain, is that related? Are my fertility problems related? And yeah, there are so many different things that can be related because thyroid disease impacts every single cell in our body because every cell has thyroid hormone receptors. So a lot of times the symptoms may be very nonspecific. Um, and so that was episode one and two is helping you understand which of your symptoms may be related to thyroid disease. In episode two, we started diving a little bit deeper into some of the brain symptoms. So we talked about brain fog, we talked about anxiety, we talked about depression, and all of these things can be resolved once you address the immune system imbalance and the thyroid condition. So um, Kim, let's see who else is joining. Wow, we've got quite a few people joining in tonight, so happy Friday. Um, and Nicole from Chicago, hello Nicole, so hometown, shout out. Carmela says hello. Um, Nicole says, I've been wondering what was wrong with me, thank you. Yeah, I'm really, really glad to hear that. Um, I know we had some wonderful feedback from you guys and, and some people are like, I already know this stuff, um, but at the same time, I felt like it was really, really important to include this in there because so many of us, and I was one of those people where I was like, is my hair loss related? Is my acid rot? reflux related? Is my irritable bowel syndrome, is that a part of it? And most conventional doctors will tell you that no. It's basically you, you have like two symptoms that are related, right? Um, and that once you get on medication, they're all, they're all resolved and it's pretty much cold intolerance is like the only one they'll really recognize. And I remember I was, my hair was falling out and they were like, oh, that's not thyroid related. And I'm like, really? And then I got my thyroid hormones and um, my root cause is optimized and the hair loss is gone, right? So now I got my hair back. 
Uh, Nicole from Las Vegas, hello. Cami says, hi from Florida. Thank you for saving my thyroid. Yes, we're doing this together. Carmela from Houston, Kim from New York, Leslie. Leslie's saying sound is awesome. Okay, I'm really, really glad to hear that. And Sandy's saying love the series. Hello from Rhode Island. Hello, Caitlin. Katerina from LA. She can hear me. Tracy. Oh, she wants to know, can you speak to dizziness and facial flushing? Um, Tracy, so these are going to be, dizziness is oftentimes going to be related to adrenal and blood sugar issues. We're going to cover that in episode six, so make sure you check into that. And facial flushing, this could be related to that, or it could be related to what we cover in episode weight eight. <laughs> Wait, in episode eight, when we discuss um, some of the chronic infections, one of the infections, and um, not to toot my own horn here, but I feel like I was one of the people that helped to get the message out about this infection being a potential trigger in Hashimoto's is blastocystis hominis, and it can trigger Hashimoto's hives, um, and then also irritable bowel syndrome. What's exciting is once you get rid of this infection, you see a reduction in thyroid antibodies, reduction in food sensitivities, hives and IBS go away. And I've had some people who have gone into complete remission once they get rid of that potential pathogen. Um, Victoria says, hello from Savannah. Savannah, I've always wanted to go there. Um, that sounds like an amazing place. Rosa says, you're awesome. One question, I'm having major nerve issues but full neural workup, which came back clear. Have a lot of numbers and tingling all over my numbness and tingling. Can Hashimoto's really cause that much damage? Been on T4 and trying months to get T3. Um, Ross, potentially this could be related. I would also really look into other types of autoimmune conditions and then look into potential blood sugar issues. Um, the good news is a lot of these things are going to be reversible. Um, the nerve issues especially can be reversed. Um, there's actually different supplements you can do to reverse them. Um, please be sure to watch episode six when you talk about blood sugar issues. And I feel like a lot of the things that we cover here are going to be very, very relevant. And I'm glad that you're also getting on T3 or trying to get on it. Julia, how do you know if massive hair loss is low ferritin related to thyroid related? How do you tell the difference? So Julia, this is a great question, and I'll tell you that most people with thyroid disease um, who are women of childbearing age have low ferritin levels. Ferritin is our iron storage protein, and that can cause us to, among other things, when we, that is low, it could cause us to lose hair. Now there's various reasons why you might have a low ferritin. One of them could be because you have an infection like H. pylori, which triggers thyroid disease and makes your ferritin levels low because it sucks up um, all of our stomach acid or suppresses it, I, I should say neutralizes it, so then we don't absorb iron from our foods. That's one potential root cause for both conditions. Um, not eating enough, uh, enough meat, that can also cause um, potential problems with both conditions. So really, um, it's kind of one of those things where with thyroid disease, it's not just one thing that you have to get dialed in. And that's why I'm so passionate about getting this message out. But oftentimes it's a whole bunch of imbalances that leads our body to develop thyroid disease. So we're going to have um, you know, nutrient deficiencies like that in ferritin, food sensitivities. We're going to have potentially infections. We're going to have chronic toxins or an impaired stress response. And of course, a whole host of gut issues like low stomach acid. And so you have to address, for, for some people, it's just one thing. It's like you get off of gluten and... You know, the whole world changes. I wish it was that easy for everybody. I really, really would love that. Or, you know, as a pharmacist, I would love if there was just one pill, but unfortunately there isn't. So there's all these things you need to educate yourself about as a patient and dial in all those things. And we cover um, ferritin in episode five. And then I also have it in my book, Hashimoto's the Protocol. So I have some fundamental protocols for you that you can do to help you um, address low ferritin levels. And that will help your your hair loss. So definitely, um, to summarize, definitely look into ferritin and also definitely make sure that you address your thyroid hormone as well. So um, having hair loss is, is kind of like your body's way of saying, hey, I feel like I'm in danger and I don't have enough resources. So instead of giving you beautiful, shiny, full hair, I'm just going to pull these resources and any imbalance in the body that makes the body feel like it's under under threat could, could cause that. So, um, 
So really, you know, I, not every organ lives in a vacuum and all these things are interrelated. Sandy from Ocala, Florida. Julia from Indiana. Um, Andrea from Minnesota. Let's see, uh, this is life-changing, thank you. So Kristen says, um, let's see, Andrea also said thyroid meds. Which ones do you, do you take? Which ones do you recommend? Um, and then Lucy, we'll get into that in a sec. Lucy, just real quick, she says, um, I don't have fast forward options. So actually, if you click on the picture and put it in large screen, you can pause it. So um, you can do that. Um, Carmela says, my doc said my numbers were normal, but I couldn't peel myself out of bed. Shedding hair dry, itchy scalp. This is so wonderful. Great. So um, I'm really happy that you're here. You're in the right place. We're going to get you. We're going to get you better. Um, I would look into yeast and um, candida, candida issues if you're having those kinds of symptoms. We're gonna cover that in episode eight. So I'm gonna pause here for a minute and I'm gonna ask you guys if you could please share this to your timeline. Day three of the thyroid secret is gonna be really, really important because we're gonna be talking about the difference between the conventional approach to thyroid disease as well as the functional medicine approach to thyroid disease or the root cause approach as I like to call it, right? and the lifestyle approach. So the conventional approach to thyroid disease is basically you radiate it, you remove it, you medicate it, you suppress it. Um, and I'm not against medicating, so I'm a pharmacist of course, and I definitely think that medications have their place and medications have saved me quite a few different times in my life and I'm sure for many of you. But um, the differences with functional medicine and lifestyle medicine is we're not just looking to band-aid the symptoms we're looking to figure out what's causing the symptoms. So it's like, well, what caused you to develop a thyroid condition? We also, um, in functional and integrative medicine, we're also looking at, okay, what are some of the things that we can take from other kinds of healing modalities that can help a person feel better? And, and my theory is, or, or my, my mantra, whatever you want to call it, is that the most comprehensive and caring approach to healing and most patient friendly is always going to be an integrative approach. So um, I know there are some people that will say, okay, well, I'll never take medications or um, I will never change my diet or I'll never do X, Y, and Z. And I really encourage you guys to keep an open mind because there may be things that are unconventional that may um, lead you to recover your health. And then for those of you guys that are hesitant about th taking thyroid hormones, these can actually be a big, make a big difference for you. So I really encourage you to keep an open mind. And as you watch episode three, we're gonna take you through the path of conventional treatments, what they are, what are some of the challenges behind the conventional treatments, and then we're gonna get into some of these integrative, functional medicine and lifestyle treatments. So let me know, you guys, I'd love to know if you've been watching The Thyroid Secret. Have you seen episode one? Have you seen episode two? Have you seen episode three? And um, I also wanted to let you know um, if you do want to watch it, if you go to, I have a link in this description here, tinyurl.com slash thyroidsecret e3. And I also um, wrote out some nifty links for you guys here at the bottom. So um, tinyurl.com slash thyroidsecret e3 is what you can do to watch episode three, which is airing tonight and all day tomorrow. So make sure that you catch that because this takes you through the entire approach to thyroid disease from conventional versus functional medicine. And we give you this whole inner er, overview and then we, um, we'll get into more of the details for each of the approaches in subsequent episode. In today's episode, we really get deep into um, T4, T3, low dose naltrexone, low level laser therapy, and then stem cells. And then we start kind of painting the bridge be beyond that, like what else can you do from a functional medicine perspective and what causes thyroid disease. Let's see, Rain says, love your documentary. I'm so glad to hear that, Rain. Um, Jill says, I woke up with my face very flushed and burning. It's very red, mostly cheeks. What could be caused by this? You know, there's a variety of different things. I encourage you to watch episode six and episode eight. And so it's gonna be potentially, um, and four, four, six, and eight. So potentially it's gonna to be toxins, 
it might be food sensitivities, it might be infections, or it might be adrenal issues. And really all of these things are potential root causes of thyroid disease and having an imbalance in the body. Um, let's see, we have a question from Marilyn. Hi, Isabella from Bay City, Michigan. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your dedication in helping us find the root cause. I really need to find a solution to overcome hypothyroidism and candida and numbness and tingling. Could intolerance, what is your best advice? So, um, okay, so people that have a hard time getting rid of candida, there are two potential root causes. So one, obviously you wanna do a candida protocol and we cover that in episode eight and I cover that um, in Hashimoto's, pro wrong finger, in Hashimoto's protocol as well. Um, the other thing that I have discussed in um, Hashimoto's protocol is the reasons why people with candida can't seem to get rid of it could be because they have, um, a, you know, you think about candida, it's an opportunistic pathogen. So it basically is there when there's a kind of the right environment for it. So one of the things that sets the environment for um, candida is if you have a parasitic infection in the gut. And now I know this sounds crazy, and when I first came out with Hashimoto's, the root cause in 2013, I just like didn't ever want to talk about parasites because I thought, you know, I, somebody would send me to the crazy house, to the loony bin, um, but I feel like it's a very, very important thing to talk about and a lot of people in the Western world don't think they have them. I'll give you guys statistics in my studies of people with thyroid disease, those that don't get better within three months of going on a clean diet, a significant amount of people will do get, will have a remission when they go um, eat, start eating clean. But those that don't, about 80% of them have some sort of a gut infection. Um, about a fourth of them have a parasite known as blastocystis hominis. And we cover this in episode four. So this, or I'm sorry, in episode eight, I'm having a hard time keeping track of all the numbers. Um, in, episode, in episode four, we cover the other potential cause of why somebody might not be able to get rid of their candida. And that's having heavy metals or toxins within your body or even mold in your home. So I would encourage you to watch both of those episodes um, and I hope that they'll give you some solutions. Chris wants to know where is day three? So Chris, if you go into the watch link, you go to tinyurl.com slash thyroid secret E3, you could see this link in the description, description, description of this um, Facebook Live event. And I also have written out the link for you down here, tinyurl.com thyroid secret E3. So yesterday I tried to chat and type links and I accidentally um, kicked myself off of Facebook Live, so I'll try not to do that today. That's why I, I wrote up all this stuff for you guys. Um, Rosa says this was such an excellent episode. Rosa, I'm so glad to hear that. And then Nicole says she already shared this. Nicole, thank you so much for sharing this Facebook Live. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and if you guys are watching this, if you could kindly share this to your timeline. We have, um, we're looking at, you know, thyroid disease is really epi happening in epidemic proportions. Um, Hashimoto's itself can affect 27% of our population and people are misdiagnosed. They're told that they're crazy. They're told that they're fat. They're told that they're lazy um, because doctors are not doing the right tests and they're not listening to us. Many of us are women that have this condition. Um, and to me, this is, this is a really, really big challenge and a really big struggle. So I hope that you guys will share this and let people know um, when they have these kinds of symptoms. This is going to be related to their thyroid gland, and they do not have to be crazy, fat, or lazy forever. These things can be 100% reversed. Okay, let's see here. Somebody said the tiny URL link doesn't work. Um, it is working on my end, so you might want to try a new browser. Um, or if you're having a hard time, I would reach out to my, um, my wonderful team, info at thethyroidsecret.com, and they'll be able to hook you up with that. Carmela said she's only seen episode one, so I do hope you check into episode two and three. Um, Madeline has seen episode one and two. Noelle says, I keep breaking up. Chris posted a link if you guys want to go to Unknown Thyroid Therapies and the Thyroid Secret. 
Um, I try to shorten the link, but you guys um, can do that. Uh, let's see here. And then Rosa says, I will not miss episode. Leslie says, all three, I'm not missing any. I've been ill for so many years. My psychiatrist is that one that tested my thyroid and found the imbalance. And, you know, that's such an important point. We talked about this yesterday, is that th uh, psychiatric conditions can actually be caused by thyroid disorders. And I've worked with some amazing psychiatrists over the last few um, years as I, when I started my career as a pharmacist. And I'll tell you what, the most progressive ones are actually the ones that find thyroid disease. Um, and this kind of segues into our next big takeaway from today. So thyroid hormone treatment. Thyroid hormones, there are two potential thyroid hormones that are of the most significant importance in, in um, you know, thyroid physiology. So T4 is one hormone, and this is actually what's prescribed as Synthroid or synthetic thyroid hormone or levothyroxine or L-troxin, depending on what country you're in. This type of medication is going to be very, very helpful for a lot of people with thyroid disease. According to the drug information pamphlets and according to what I learned in pharmacy school and according to what's taught in medical school. In the real world, um, this doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. So we actually find that some people, and I would say um, as the thyroid pharmacist, probably 80% of them just don't seem to do well with T4 on its own. And so they may actually benefit from the addition of another thyroid hormone into the mix. This is going to be known as T3 hormone. Um, some of the names for this are going to be Cytomel. Um, that's one potential name. Or where it's taken as a standalone pill, and then you would combine that with your levothyroxine pill. Or um, this could be taken as a combination pill, such as natural desiccated thyroid hormones. So um, WP thyroid, Nature thyroid as well as Armour Thyroid are some potential um, brand names of that. And then you can also get compounded T4, T3 medications from a compounding pharm pharmacist. Um, somebody asked which thyroid hormones I take, which thyroid hormones I recommend, and I'm always a big proponent of T4, T3 containing medications, whether that's compounded T4, T3, Nature Thyroid, um, Armour Thyroid, or WP Thyroid. So those are going to be my top recommendations. Um, and of course, everybody is going to be different. So I don't want to give you guys, say, like, this is the one to take. Um, and some people might actually benefit from just taking T4 or even just T3 by itself. You're all going to be different. But what I found in my um, surveys and just working with clients over the years, that people seem to do best on um, either compounded T4, T3, or natural desiccated thyroid. And they see a significant improvement in thyroid symptoms when they get on those hormones, when they have that extra T3. So I think of T3 as our go hormone. So it creates beautiful hair. It helps us have um, energy and it helps us just feel better, right? Um, and, and get sort of that brain fog. If once we get on that hormone, we can see a tremendous difference in how people feel. And sometimes that's all it takes. Um, let's see here. Sarah asks, I want to get off armor, but when I reduce it, my thyroid stops. How can I get off of the medication? So Sarah, that's a really, really good question. And, um, you know, really what I recommend for people as far as thyroid hormones go is you want to make sure um, you, when you do things, you do them in like a logical form, format or a logical sense. And if, you, if your thyroid gland is damaged by the immune system like it is in Hashimoto's, then you're not gonna be able to produce your own thyroid hormone because you don't have a lot of that thyroid gland functioning, right? And because it's under constant attack. So the first thing you need to do in that case is get on the right amount of thyroid hormone because thyroid hormone impacts every single cell in the body. So that's gonna be step one for you is to make sure you do that so you start addressing some of those imbalances because if you don't, um, you know, they're gonna be very symptomatic and you're gonna actually prevent your own healing. When you take thyroid hormone, um, your own thyroid gland doesn't have to work so hard, and then it doesn't cause as much, um, I guess, attention to itself from the immune system. So whenever the thyroid gland, whenever our TSH is up, the immune system's like, hey, something's wrong, and I'm going to attack it, right? And so when you have your um, thyroid hormones on board, that kind of gives your thyroid gland a break. So that's going to be the first step. 
The second step is gonna be balancing that immune system so it stops attacking your thyroid gland. So we're gonna be talking about um, some of these strategies here in a minute. Um, and then we're gonna be, you know, this is really the root cause approach and then immune, modula immune modulation approach. And then after that, um, so that's kind of step two, right? Then after that, it's like, okay, so your thyroid gland was damaged because of the attack. We stopped, we got um, enough hormone, so you have it on board, we stopped the attack. Now, that doesn't mean that your thyroid function is gonna come back on its own. Um, thyroid function, um, you know, if your thyroid gland has been destroyed, sometimes it happens where people's thyroid function comes back and the thyroid gland heals right away really quickly. But this doesn't always happen in a predictable fashion and it doesn't happen for everybody. But luckily, episode three has some strategies where you can accelerate that healing and um, the studies are showing um, in one particular sense, 50% of people are able to wean off of thyroid hormones. Now, this is not something that is common knowledge. This is not something that's gonna be cheap, but it is possible. And so it is something that you can do, but you wanna do it in a stepwise approach. So first you wanna dial in your hormones, then you wanna figure out your root causes, and then you wanna work on tissue regeneration before you even start thinking about weaning off of hormones because if you wean off of them too fast, oh, and that's another point, is like you don't, you don't wanna just stop cold turkey. You wanna wean off of them um, because they can get built into your body. So um, if you guys think this is helpful, um, I encourage you to please go ahead and share this to your timeline and let people know that there are paths to feeling better when you have thyroid disease, that you can stop the attack on your thyroid gland, and then in some cases, you can actually you know, recover and potentially wean off of thyroid hormones given the right kind of interventions and protocols. So let's see here. Um, Bobby says, shared from Edmonton, Alberta. Thank you so much. Um, Andrea says, doctors go by the books, numbers, and not symptoms. They don't listen. You know, Andrea and I so agree with you, and that's why we need to find a doctor that listens, right? So um, I really hope that, you know, when I, I, I kind of say this, like when people first come to my website or come, you know, to talk to me, they're like, where can I find a doctor to help me? But I really want to empower you guys to say, where, how can I help myself and what can I do? and then build a team of people around you that can get you there because you as a patient have a choice. You know, Think of these people, the doctors, um, you know, the healthcare professionals that you consult for, with, um, they work for you, so you can fire them. You can be the, you're the CEO of your own health. Um, let's see here, Denise said, so much great information in one and two, I'm sharing with friends. Wonderful, um, Brian wants to know, is episode three for viewing yet? Yes, um, so if you go to the link, the tiny URL link, go to um, slash thyroid secret E3. I have that listed in the description of this Facebook Live event. You'll be able to get to that. Um, and hopefully you'll get to watch episode three. So it just came out today about um, uh, two hours and 45 minutes ago, and then it'll be up for another 21 hours or so. So make sure you get on that and you check it out and you jump right in. Aubrey says, what is Ken and LLT? So we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, I don't see Ken listed on here, but maybe maybe you guys are having a hard time reading my, my, my writing, my chicken scratch. Um, let's see here. Rachel wants to know, are thyroid disorders hereditary? Um, there is a genetic predisposition for them, but that does not mean that we have to have a thyroid condition. Um, so stage one of thyroid disease is actually having the genetic predisposition. I would argue that 80% of us have them um, in a, given the hard enough exposures and environmental factors. So Chernobyl, um, I actually was, grew up close to, not in the same country, but I was on the Ukrainian border in Poland with Chernobyl and um, when, when the um, tragedy happened. And this, there were studies done in children who grew up right in that vicinity and were exposed within a certain age, and 80% of them had Hashimoto's antibodies. So again, this is something that's very, very significant, where given a strong enough environmental factor, we can see that Hashimoto's and Graves' disease will express itself, and we cover that in episode four. And really, um, you know, one of the big takeaways for episode four is the thyroid gland is tuned into our environment and then tells us when the environment is not safe. And so how do you convince your thyroid gland 
that you are safe. And we start getting into that in ep the subsequent episodes. Um, and I also, the whole premise of that is covered in my book, Hashimoto's Protocol. Um, this is, I just got these books in today. Um, this is available on Amazon, um, Barnes & Noble for pre-order right now, as well as on my website. If you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol, you'll be able to find it there. Um, and then it'll be in bookstores on March 28th, and I'm so excited about that because we're going to have a book <laughs> on Hashimoto's in bookstores, um, like major bookstores, so that this message is finally getting out to people that you can reverse it, you can feel better with it. Really, really excited about what's going to happen. Um, and I also want to let you guys know, one of the things we're doing, and many of you guys have asked if, um, if we have an option for you guys to, you know, own the DVDs or own the series if you wanted to, to um, you know, have that with you or have it in your collection or give it away to friends and family members that might benefit from it or, or you know, some of those old school people that will never watch anything online but will um, watch it in DVD format. Um, we do have that option for you guys to, to get that. And then we also have an option that I'm really excited about known as the Gold Package. And the Gold Package is actually a collection of every single interview that I did for the documentary with every single expert. So there's over 167 interviews with 100 experts and 67 patients. Um, and so, like, you know, some people are like, I just, I just want the basics. I just want all of this curated for me and put together. So for you guys, you know, getting the DVD set or watching for the nine days is going to be your best bet. For you guys that want to dig deeper and get everything and get like nerdy like me, um, we created the gold option. Um, so if you go to the thyroidsecret.com slash gold, you'll be able to see it there. And another kind of exciting announcement and bonus is you'll get a copy of Hashimoto's Protocol whenever you buy the gold package. So this is um, a $30 value, and then I'm putting that in for every person that supports the thyroid secret mission and gets the gold package. Um, so we were talking about T4 and T3. I'm going to take some questions, and then we're going to jump into LDN. Oh, Mohammed says, talk more about tissue regeneration, please. Okay, so we're, we're going to, you know, that's in episode three. If you want to hear about that, not to be a tease, but you know we we do explain it really, really well and thoroughly there, um, better than I can in um, just a few minutes here. But it is definitely possible. Um, Ashley said, I, I, "Doctor told me I need to up my dosage. You know, sometimes that can happen, and unfortunately, thyroid disease is progressive. So if you do not stop the autoimmune attack, the thyroid gland is going to keep getting attacked, and you're going to need higher dosages of medications, which, which is one." issue and the other issue is you're going to have this more destruction of your thyroid and then the third issue is it's progressive to the point where you can have additional autoimmune conditions and so my goal is for you guys to stop the progression to feel better get your life back and you know feel like yourself again feel human again and then also potentially reverse the condition and so i'm really really excited to share these innovative therapies within the thyroid secret um let's see here I've shared this and encouraged all the women I know to watch regardless of whether or not they have a thyroid condition. Rosa, thank you so much for doing this. And I encourage you guys all to please share this and share this with any woman you know, just because these conditions, um, so 27% of the population in the United States has Hashimoto's. And for every five, for every, so that's one in four, right? For every man that has the condition, five to eight women have it. So, you know, I, I haven't done the math exactly, and I don't know how many women were in that 27% study, but we're probably looking at one in three or maybe even one in two women that could have Hashimoto's. And, um, you know, anybody that you know that's tired, that's overweight, that's depressed, I would highly encourage them to um, get tested for thyroid disease. And really any woman that is thinking about having a baby that's pregnant or just had a baby, like, Pregnancy is one of the peak times that a woman can be diagnosed with thyroid disease um, and postpartum period because um, hormonal fluctuations can, can be a potential trigger. And another thing is, very devastatingly, that thyroid disease can be like a completely reversible cause of miscarriage. And that's why we have an entire episode, episode seven, dedicated to um, you know, saving babies and preventing miscarriages by addressing thyroid health during pregnancy. Um, Monica says, what about muscle mass? 
So what can we take for um, muscle mass loss? So I have that in Hashimoto's protocol. So um, for, and actually, if you pre-order the Hashimoto's protocol, when you go to thyroid pharmacist, um, darn it, I forgot a dot com. Let me correct that because you guys are probably all watching this. All right. So thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol. Um, if you go to that link, you'll be able to see, um, you'll be able to get um, the Symptom Hacker, which is a quick ebook that will tell you how to address the symptoms of thyroid disease. And one of them is sarcopenia, which is muscle loss. And um, some of the things you need to do for that are going to be um, update your, um, you know, make sure that you're not acidic. Um, because that means that you're breaking yourself down. You need to put yourself in a rest and digest state. You need to um, replenish certain nutrients. So one of them is going to be um, one of them is going to be magnesium. You want to address your stomach acid, and then you also want to increase your protein intake. So um, doing protein smoothies is going to be very very helpful for you. Um, I like hydrolyzed beef protein, um, and this is something that you can reverse and you could start building up that muscle mass. And again, if you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol, I have an ebook that I created for you guys called The Symptom Hacker. That is um, a companion guide to Hashimoto's protocol that you could download right away so that you can um, address some of these conditions. And I have um, the steps you need to take to do that. Um, let's see here. Colleen says, thank you. Melissa says, since I started Synthroid, I developed chest pains and palpitations. My doctor says anxiety, but I feel like it could be the medication. Um, in some cases, the medication can cause these symptoms, so I would encourage you to figure out if you are potentially overdosed. Rosa says, I have a, have a pen and paper available. These episodes are overflowing with so much information. Rosa, I completely agree with you. Um, we wanted to pack them with resources and guidelines and to give you guys just a really, really great way to learn about thyroid disease and empower yourself so you could take back your health. Arnetta says, I shared it. Thank you so much for sharing this with everybody. I encourage you guys to share this to your timeline. Um, really, really appreciate all the comments and questions and all the shares and all the likes. Um, it, you know, you guys are helping spread the word and you're helping pe other people with thyroid disease maybe shorten their learning curve. I know um, one of the nicest thing I, things I heard from somebody was um, I, you know, I was sick for almost 10 years with, because of uh, maybe even more, but I was undiagnosed for almost 10 years. And then after that, I still struggled with symptoms. And then that's why I decided to come out with my first book, Hashimoto's The Root Cause, to show people how to recover from thyroid disease. And people have said to me, you know, thank you so much. You just really shortened my learning curve because, um, I was struggling for so long and then I came across your book and everything was laid out to me and there it goes, you know, that I was able to try all these things and I was able to recover my health. And so I'm really, really um, grateful for having that opportunity and I appreciate your feedback on that. Um, let's see here. Paige says, any suggestions on how to fight the fatigue quickly to feel human again? Um, so Paige, one of the things that can be really, really helpful is a thiamine supplement and about 600 milligrams per day is the magic dose. If you go to thyroidpharmacist.com and you search for thiamine, T-H-I-A-M-I-N-E, you'll see an article or a post I wrote about that. Let me see if I can um, put my website address here better, flipping my hair around here to find a pen. Aha. Ugh. Let's see, so thyroidpharmacist.com is where you want to go for information. And um, that should give you access to um, a lot of different articles that I've written over the last, last um, four years, holy cow. So I first came out with my Hashimoto's The Root Cause book in 2013 after I was struggling myself and I really, really wanted to get this message out in the world that people can recover their health. Um, Brooke says, what can cause somebody to have a high TSH, but the free T3 and free T4 are in the top of the range? So this is um, known as subclinical hypothyroidism. 
this is in stage three of thyroid disease. There are five stages and they're all progressive. And um, when you have a high TSH but normal T3, T4, that means your thyroid gland is suffering an attack and some damage, but it's still able to compensate. Um, and so your body's telling it to make more and more thyroid hormone. If you don't do anything at this point, you're going to move into stage um, four where your TSH is going to be elevated even higher and then your T3 and T4 will be low at that point. And so this is a really, really great stage because that means your thyroid gland is still able to produce enough thyroid hormone. That's fantastic. This is a really great stage to implement lifestyle interventions and root cause implement root cause solutions. Um, you may also benefit from thyroid hormones at this stage as well. I know doctors will say that once you're on thyroid hormones, you have to be on them for life, but I don't want you guys to think of them as a life sentence. In some cases, you can get off of them. Um, and really, as far as medications go, um, you know, me being a pharmacist, like I used to work in medication safety. This is this is like, you know, this used to be before I, before I became the thyroid pharmacist, medication safety was one of my biggest passions. And thyroid hormones are by far the safest medications out there. So they give us what our body is missing when we have thyroid disease. The only caveat is, is if they are too high or too low, that's where all of those symptoms happen. So I know people, sometimes people will say, oh, and thyroid medications cause symptoms. Yeah, usually that's because they're not dosed correctly or because you're not on the right thyroid medication. So the, the point is um, make sure you optimize your thyroid hormones. And we're going to cover that in the Thyroid Secrets, Episode 3, um, Day 3. If you are not watching, make sure you watch. Um, there's a place to sign up um, in the description of this Facebook Live event. So tinyurl.com slash thyroidsecrete e3. And then I also have it written out here, tiny URL, if you guys want to see that little board behind me. Now, the other things we're going to cover in episode three, we're going to cover a low dose naltrexone, which is a treatment that can be used for both um, thyroid disease that's caused by Graves' disease or Hashimoto's disease. Um, this can also be used for cancer. Um, this, and it can be helpful for fertility purposes as well. This is a medication that is also one of those, um, one of my favorite medications as a pharmacist. Very, very low side effect profile. Um, the biggest side effect of it is actually having vivid dreaming. And in some cases, the vivid dreams can be scary. In other cases, they can be exciting. In other cases, they can be erotic, which some people enjoy actually. Or, um, you know, and, and some people don't have these vivid dreams. In most cases, within two weeks of changing of, um, getting on the medication and then um, they will start seeing those vivid dreams resolve. The other thing too is um, whenever you change doses, when you go up on a dose, they, vivid dreams can come back, but then they usually resolve. So this is a very, very safe medication. It's um, an FDA approved medication known as naltrexone, but what it's compounded into lower doses by compounding pharmacists. And there's a specific dose range for people with Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. What we found in people with Hashimoto's is in some cases, they can cause the person to significantly um, lower the requirement for thyroid hormones. And then we've also seen a big reduction in thyroid antibodies. So people in the 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 range, they'll have their antibodies under 100. This is something that I recommend um, within a few months. This is something I recommend for people with really high antibodies, for people who have, um, who have potentially multiple autoimmune conditions because LDN not just helps thyroid disease, but it also helps other types of autoimmune issues. And then for people with Graves' disease. So we talked about some of the, we talk about some of the medications that are used in Graves' disease to suppress thyroid function. I would say, um, you know, if you could, doing LDN may be a safer option than some of the medications and then definitely not getting your thyroid gland removed is something that I would I would recommend that should be a last resort right when you have graves or getting radioactive iodine that destroys your thyroid and so LDN is one potential alternate alternate and we also talk about some of the herbs that can be used for graves disease in this episode so I hope that you guys check into episode 3 um, tinyurl.com slash thyroid secret e3 this is going to be really, really phenomenal for you to watch and educate yourself. I have a, um, I have a, quite a few wonderful people talking about LDN, so a few experts. Um, of course, I know a lot about it, but at the same time, um, Shannon Garrett 
She's a nurse educator for LDN, a, a dear friend of mine, and she has found there are certain things you need to do in, to get um, optimize your outcomes on LDN. In my studies of, of readers with Hashimoto's, I found about 40% of them have feel better with LDN and have reduced antibodies and have reduction of symptoms, whereas Shannon has been able to get that success rate much higher because of the things she recommends. Um, we also have um, Dr. Mark Mendel, who is a compounding pharmacist out of um, Chicago uh, suburbs, who's um, become a friend as well, and he's got some fantastic information to share of all of the different conditions that can be helpful for um, for that can be helped by LDN and actually if you guys do get the gold package I highly recommend that you watch his episode um, his interview that I did with him we just we really go deep into LDN and we talk about LDN for pets LDN for cancer LDN for addiction LDN for food addiction I just you know I was <laughs> you might see my mouth like drop my jaw drop to the ground every time learning about just some of the phenomenal um, outcomes and results and uses that he's seen um, he's been a pharmacist for um, 20, 30 years, and his practice is very much based on providing low-dose naltrexone to patients from all over the country. And then we have Julia Shopik, who's also a dear friend from Chicago, and she's an LDN advocate where she talks about um, some of the best practices. And what, what I'm really excited about is how to get your doctor to prescribe LDN for you. So um, if this is an option that you're thinking about, it can be very, very helpful. Um, again, it's not a cure-all for every single person, but you know we we don't have a magic pill for everything, right? So it's a combination of integrative factors, and I hope that you um, you know keep an open mind and consider and educate yourself about all the resources that are available to you. Um, let's see, we have a lot of questions coming in, so let's take some questions. Jen says. Um, Wow, they're flowing so fast, so give me guys a sec because they keep changing up on me. Um, Tammy says, I was a hot mess on, on Synthroid until I changed to Armor, so I'm glad to hear that. Um, Tammy, um, Tammy says, what does having a goiter mean? So a goiter means that your thyroid gland has been enlarged, um, and there are strategies that can shrink your goiter. One of them is getting on thyroid hormones, um, and then low-level laser therapy can actually help with that too, which is um, the next thing on our list to talk about. But I want to take some of your questions here. Um, Maria says, tyrosine and leothyronine working great. Monica says, talk about parasites. So parasites can actually trigger thyroid disease. They cause leaky gut, and they can trigger autoimmune disease. I know that Americans think that we don't have them. And people in the Western countries say, oh, no, that, that's not something that happens in America, right? Um, but, yeah, we have them. Like, I found them in plenty of people. I had them myself. I had um, two different parasites. I had blastocystis hominis. Um, and this is very, very common in people with Hashimoto's. When you get rid of the blastoparasite, for example, you see a big reduction in thyroid antibodies and you see um, a person's food sensitivities go away. So for me, when I got off of, when I got rid of that pathogen, I was no longer grain intolerant, and I was able to resolve a lot of my food intolerances. Um, Mitza says, I didn't get episode three. Um, if you could in email, check your spam, first of all, and then email info at thethyroidsecret.com, and also see whatever emails that you got from us, because you know, we were kind of trying to be clever and have a lot of fun with some of the subject lines of the emails, and so you might have gotten an email about it, but you may not have known that it was episode three. So I apologize for that. We, we were having too much fun writing, writing all of these announcement emails. Andrea says, I noticed that after a gluten-free diet, I wasn't fatigued anymore. I also stopped dairy and eggs, um, but I've stayed gluten and dairy-free. Um, that's awesome to hear. Andrea, we cover some of these interventions in episode three, like how to dial in your nutrition, and then we dig really deep into that in episode five. Um, this is, you guys are going to think this is completely crazy, and, you know, consider this is coming from a pharmacist, but I did a survey over 2,000 people with, with thyroid disease with Hashimoto's that were my readers, 2,232 to be exact in 2015, and I asked them which interventions help the most for fatigue, for um, depression and for weight. And um, guess what beat out thyroid hormones? It was gluten-free diet. So gluten-free diet helped more people, 
feel better, like lose weight, be less tired than thyroid hormones did. And so, of course, I recommend doing both, right? So like you want to take the best of all worlds and give yourself every opportunity to heal. Um, one thing I kind of just wanted to throw out there is I've been doing a lot of educating over the last few years and I've worked with a lot of people and I'll tell you something is the people that put in the work actually are the ones that get better and so um, you know I, I just really encourage you you know there's only probably 10 percent of people that actually take the advice they're learning in my books and then in the th series and even with working with me I think that's you know with working with me usually it's a higher percentage because they're obviously more motivated to um, to do that but it, it's you know like you guys were I'm trying to give you all the information possible that you could have to take back your health and it's really up to you to make the changes to to implement these changes and I really hope that you do that for yourself and you'll see with every change that you make whether that's switching to your hormones and then changing up your diet and then getting on LDN you know you're gonna see improvement 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 so anyway just wanted to throw that little caveat out there have another question. Um, do probiotics help? They do. Jill wants to know, is Epstein-Barr correlated? Yes. Episode 8, we talk about Epstein-Barr. Um, Teresa wants to know about T4 to T3 conversion. Um, one of the things that can be helpful is addressing liver function and gut function. Um, we covered that in Episode 4 and 8, so I encourage you to do that. How do you get rid of, how do you get checked for parasites? So I recommend doing some parasite testing. There's a test known as the 401H test and the GI map test that I found very, very helpful. And um, I cover a lot of the testing in Hashimoto's protocol. Um, and then the other thing about getting rid of them is, um, you know, there's not actually like a protocol for every single parasite. So every bug gets a different drug or herb. Um, then I have various protocols for various bugs that you might have in Hashimoto's protocol. So um, this is my book that is, I just got in the mail today. It's coming out on March 28th. And if you guys do choose to support the mission of the thyroid secret and choose to own the gold package, you'll get, um, you know, you'll get this included in your package. So you'll get the gold package mailed to you. And then as soon as this baby hits, you know, the, the shelves, this will be mailed to you as well. Um, let's see, so Catherine wanted to know how do we get rid of parasites, and you know, it's going to be through medication, herbs, and some of them can be gotten rid of, can be eliminated through diet, so there, there's, every drug gets a different kind of protocol, every bug gets a different protocol. Beth wants to know where do we go for LDN. This is something that you would get a prescription for from a doctor and get it filled at a compounding pharmacy. One of the things you can do is contact your local compounding pharmacy and um, check with them to see if they make it and then check with them to see if they have a referral for you. Oh, okay, so there's a lot of interest in parasites. Okay, great. So I think you guys really, really need to get in on episode eight because we talk about all the different parasites, the, the, the most common infections. Um, the most common one I found is Blastocystis hominis. If you um, go on thyroidpharmacist.com and Google Blasto, you'll be able to find information on that. And I have all of the Blasto protocols. Um, if you go on Facebook groups and listen to internet forums, you'll find that Blasto cannot be, you'll read that Blasto can't be eradicated. Um, I've had I mean, everybody that I know of, I've had pretty much 100% success rate with, with helping them get rid of blasto through the protocols that I utilize. So um, that's covered in Hashimoto's protocol. And um, parasites, you know, they're usually not going to be giant worms. <laughs> they're not going to be something that you see in your toilet or you're not even going to be aware that you have it. Some people might have bloating, irritability, um, you know, irritable bowel is what I meant, or they might have symptoms, but half of them don't. They're asymptomatic. Um, Dr. Dan Kalish, who is one of my mentors, is actually featured in episode eight. So he's the one, one of the um, key people that taught me about parasites um, triggering autoimmune disease and has taught me a lot of different protocols. He is talking about um, them a little bit more and the physiology behind it in episode eight. But just real quick, um, they're very, very common. Um, they're usually microscopic, so they are known as protozoa, which cannot be seen. Those are the most common type. 
um, these cannot be seen with the naked with the naked eye. So they're like uh, they're teeny, teeny, tiny, and you would never ever know you have them unless you did the right kind of testing. Gr Diana wants to know Gr. Yeah, yep. We've seen that in people with Hashimoto's, and we've seen really good results when we get rid of it. How do you get parasites? You can get parasites from food, from pets, um, from traveling abroad. So um, they're very, very, very common. <laughs> and it sounds very, very controversial and kind of, I have to tell you, I was really grossed out when I first learned about this, but you can't see them. Like they're, they're tiny microscopic and they, they cause your gut to be leaky. So they're, they're almost like bacteria. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not something to have nightmares about. I know some, of, some people get grossed out. Um, next thing we, I wanted to talk about, so we talked a little bit about LDN. The other big takeaways we have is tissue regenerating protocols. So how do you get rid of, or how do you heal up your thyroid tissue? And some of the things we share in there is I have an expert in low-level laser therapy. This is clinically found to reduce the need for thyroid hormones in about 50% of, or eliminate the need for thyroid hormones in about 50% of people with Hashimoto's. Not very well known in the United States, but this is something that's being done in Brazil in endocrinology clinics, right? Um, and so we have an expert that talks about that, Dr. Kirk Gare. And then we also have an expert that talks about stem cell therapy. Um, and this is Dr. Um, Tammy from Moralia from Washington. And she talks about how stem cells can actually regenerate thyroid tissue as well. And so these are some potential things that you guys will want to make sure you check in to episode three of the thyroid secrets um, we can do the episode will do give you much more information and and i really really hope that you'll dial into that and, and get get that um, let's see here kavita wants to know the link between sleep apnea and thyroid disease yes kavita that i'm going to put out an article about this sometime it's actually i have it covered in my book hashimoto's protocol um, sleep apnea can very much be a trigger for thyroid disease um, and it is something the longer you have it, the higher your chances of having thyroid antibodies. So this is a very, very important root cause. And I actually have sleep apnea protocols, so beyond CPAP in my book, Hashimoto's Protocol. Um, if you guys are interested in my book, you can pre-order it. It's sold um, at Amazon and Barnes and Noble right now, and you can also get it at thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol. And we're including a copy of it for everybody that gets a copy of the gold package from the Thyroid Secret um, as a way of thanking you for supporting this mission. This project has been, um, as you can imagine, a huge undertaking for me and my husband and our entire team. So I traveled all around the country for most of last year. Um, I really missed my dog and my hubby to record and interview over 100 experts and 67 patients who have had... Um, improvements, recoveries, healing from thyroid disease, or who just wanted to share their experience with others um, to create this exciting documentary for you so that you know how to recover your health. And we're putting it out for free for nine days um, for you guys to watch. And of course, we're giving you the option if you wanted to own the series and get the DVDs, we're giving you that option as well. And that helps us support our mission and that helps, um, helps me create more awareness about Hashimoto's and thyroid disease when I first came out with my book, Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, in 2013, I was one of the, um, there, was only, there was only like two other books on Hashimoto's, and now if you search on Amazon, you'll see that there are tons of them and tons of thyroid books coming out, and I can't, I, I'm so happy about that because now people are finally starting, starting to pay attention. So the more we can get this message into the mainstream, the more we can let um, everybody know that this is something important, that there's a demand, the more likely we are going to see a change in the system. So um, I don't know if you guys are know, know about this, but one of my one of my secrets is I was trained um, I was trained by the U.S. government in in, a, in spreading health, change and innovation in healthcare. And so this part, this um, my books and the thyroid secret and everything that I'm doing is meant to change the way that thyroid disease is treated once and for all, so that we don't have to suffer. Um, I know I suffered for 10 years and I don't want you to suffer like I did. And so that we have the ability to empower ourselves with the information we need to take back our health. And eventually my hope is that for every person that's diagnosed 
that has a thyroid condition will be diagnosed early and that they will receive the information that they need to recover their health as soon as possible, whether that's from um, their local doctor or from books or resources or online resources. So thank you so much for being a part of this mission. Thank you for your support. Thank you for taking this time for yourself. Really, really excited to be here with you. Um, um, you guys are asking where you can buy the DVD. If you go to the thyroidsecret.com slash gold, you'll be able to learn more about the options we have there for buying the DVDs and um, supporting the, the Thyroid Secret mission. I really appreciate if you did that. It would help me continue my work um, and definitely get this message out in a big way. And um, yeah, and I hope that you register to watch the Thyroid Secret if you haven't yet. So tinyurl.com slash Thyroid Secret E3 will give you the episode three information. So um, Heather says, thank you for everything. Heather, it's my pleasure. This is my passion, my life's work. I'm really glad to be here. Sarah says, thank you. Lisa says, um, could Hashimoto's be triggered by another autoimmune condition like Sjogren's? Um, so Lisa, a lot of times autoimmune conditions go hand in hand. The interesting thing is whatever you do to help your Hashimoto's is going to help your Sjogren's and vice versa. So a lot of times what I've seen is when we reverse one autoimmune condition, we can reverse them all or multiples. So i um, really, really excited that you're here. And I'm really excited to hear about the transformations that you're going to have. Craig says, thank you. Um, Monica says, what to take up for worms? So Monica, it's going to vary depending on what kind of um, pathogen you have. I have a variety of different protocols. I don't want to tell you to take one thing because it might not work. So you, there's 20, 30 different types of pathogens, and every one of them is going to require a different protocol. And I cover... Um, you know, in the advanced protocol section of Hashimoto's protocol, I have information on how to address that. Um, Monica, talk about thyroid and teeth. It's important also. You know, this is really, really great. For, thanks for bringing that up. We actually, I actually have dental protocols in Hashimoto's protocol as well. So I, I address that. So the connection between periodontitis and then um, triggers within the mouth. Um, we covered that in the thyroid secret as well in episode four and in episode eight. So um, thanks, thank you so much for bringing that up because it's such an overlooked root cause. Um, sometimes people can have infected teeth and those could be causing their thyroid disease. So um, I've been collecting remission stories for the last four years, um, over 500 now. And um, all of you guys watching, I will, I hope that in one, two, three months, I will get an email from you with your remission story because I hope that this information empowers you to figure out what your root cause is to help you recover your life. And it could be an infected tooth, and it could be a parasite, or it could be a food sensitivity. You know, it could be a whole bunch of different things. Anything that makes your body feel like you're not safe and anything that makes you your body feel like, okay, we need to slow down and stop producing thyroid hormone and we need to crawl back into our cave. This is going to set off your thyroid condition. So um, with that said, I wanted to thank you guys all for dialing in. Um, Monica wants to know the DVDs and show websites, so it's linked here. If you go to um, thethyroidsecret.com slash gold, you'll be able to get um, more information about getting the DVDs, and you can also watch for free tinyurl.com slash thyroidsecrete3. That'll give you access to episode three. If you are just finding out about the, the series, you can go to thethyroidsecret.com um, to learn more about it. Um, PJ says, another great episode. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the benefits of this great info. I'm so excited to hear that. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for, for being here. And I will see you tomorrow same place same time and make sure that you're watching the thyroid secret and i'm hoping to get some feedback from you guys on what you think if you found it helpful if you found it beneficial um if you've had any aha moments because you know starting day three we're starting to really go deep and every day we're going to go a little bit deeper and deeper to give you guys more protocols and more solutions and more ways to take back your health so thank you again so much um Thank you, guys. Um, Bobby, thank you so much. Teresa, thank you so much. Um, Rachel, thank you. Um, 
Teresa um, is asking about low-level laser therapy. I have more information in Hashimoto's protocol, all about that, um, what settings were used, and so on and so forth. I'm sorry, I don't know them offhand. Um, I <laughs> didn't memorize them, unfortunately, um, but I have that information, and then I will be putting out a blog post about it um, when I get back to writing after I'm done doing all of this exciting thyroid secret stuff um, that will be on my website, thyroidpharmacist.com. I'm looking forward to that that time. It's been really, really fun and exciting to be here with you guys. And um, thank you so much for dialing in. Alexis says, thank you. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you, Cece. Um, thank you, Cher. Joanna, um, I have a book in the Polish language as well. So it's called Zaparenie Tarczycy Hashimoto. And so that is, um, let me show you that real quick. Having so much fun here, you guys, hanging out. Zapalenie Tarczycy Hashimoto. This is the Polish version of my book. It's available on Amazon. Um, we also have um, Tiroidita Hashimoto. This is the Romanian version. We have Hashimoto in Griff. This is the German version. And we also have a Spanish version, Chinese version. And I actually am getting uh, messages from countries from all over the world that are looking to translate both of my books into their languages, and I'm really, really excited about that. We just signed the Bulgarian contract um, just, just a few days, so I finally got that finalized. Um, really, really excited about that. And of course, um, Hashimoto's protocol is available, you guys. It's going to be um, on Amazon, or if you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol, you can grab it there. Um, Hashimoto's The Root Cause. This is a New York Times bestseller, total accidental New York Times bestseller. Um, and this is something that is available on Amazon and the thyroid secret. So this is something that you can watch for free. So go ahead and check it out. And you can also um, purchase the DVDs if you, if you would like to. So um, I'm really, really proud of how they came out. And the design was really, really fun too. So thank you so much, you guys, for dialing in. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.